Hey everyone, welcome back to the Fuji Guys channel. My name is Gord. The Fujifilm X-T3 is available a couple different ways, including the all-black version, or my personal favorite, the silver and black, rather retro-inspired. However, inside is where you'll find a lot of the performance happening with the Fujifilm X-T3. In this video, I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about some of the top features of the camera, set it up, and show you how to take advantage of some of those features. If you want to find out more, keep on watching. The X-T3 offers a number of different options when it comes to continuous shooting or burst shooting. You can go anywhere between 3 frames per second up to 30 frames per second. You can choose mechanical shutter and go anywhere between 3 frames per second and up to 11 frames per second. Unlike previous models, you don't need to have the optional booster grip or battery grip attached to the X-T3 to take advantage of 11 frames per second. This is done using the mechanical shutter. In electronic shutter, you can go up to 30 frames per second. Here's how you get into those different modes. To choose one of the burst modes between 3 frames per second and up to 5.7 times frames per second, you turn the command dial to CL, move down to the camera icon, to the setting, to drive setting, and you go to CL low speed burst, and you can choose anywhere between 5.7 frames per second, 5 frames per second, 4.0 frames per second, or 3 frames per second. Alternately, if you turn the command dial to CH mode, you then have the choice between 8 frames per second or 11 frames per second when you're in the mechanical shutter. To take advantage of the faster frame rates, you first need to change the camera into using the electronic shutter. This is done on the same camera menu, and you scroll down to shutter type. Change from mechanical shutter to electronic shutter. This will open up the other options when it comes to the high frame rates for burst. Then you go back to that camera setting, and then you go back to drive setting, and you then choose the C H high speed setting, this opens up the other options. You can shoot 20 frames per second full frame and have no blackout when you're shooting at that 20 frames per second. If you're wanting to, then you can go one step further and with a 1.25 times crop, you can choose either 10, 20, or 30 frames per second burst modes. Depending on the parameters you have the camera set up for, whether you're capturing RAW or JPEG, as well as the speed of your card will determine how long your burst rate will go for. The X-T3 offers phase detect autofocus. This is a much faster autofocus system than contrast only. There's over 2 million photodiodes directly on the sensor, which offers very accurate autofocus when using phase detect. And it actually covers 100% of the image area. You can choose between 117 focus points when you're in single focus point mode, or upwards of 425 focus point. Let me show you how you go in the various modes. Powering the camera on, by default, when you push up on the deep four-way D-pad, you choose between single point, or you choose zone, or you choose wide tracking, or there's all. Let's take a look at a single point first. Within there, if I push the menu button and I scroll down to autofocus, manual focus, on page one, I can see that there are now either 117, or I can select it and choose upwards of 425 autofocus points. When I push in on the joystick, I actually am able to choose any one of those 425 points. Once I've made my selection, I push OK again. If I just use the joystick directly, I can move my focus point anywhere on the canvas that I'm looking to have my accurate autofocus. If I push in on the, the joystick again, I can choose and rotate between five different sizes of single autofocus point areas. And then once I've made my choice, I just hit the menu OK button. Let's look at the, some of the other options. If I change it to zone focus and I push in on the joystick, I have a choice of three different sized autofocus areas. And I can move that autofocus area anywhere within there, and the, within the frame that is, and now the camera will automatically decide where within that green square I'm able to have my autofocus area. Pushing up on the D-pad again, I can choose wide tracking. That selects the entire canvas area for my autofocus points, and the camera will determine what is the best autofocus point to be focusing on. If I choose all within there, now I can scroll through the, all of the different options without having to go back into different menus. The X-T3 has the option to have monochrome images with a slightly different hue. You can have a little bit of a blue to tone to it or a little bit of a warmer tone to it. This makes for some creative effects when you're working with monochrome images. 
To do that, you first need to choose one of the black and white or Acros film simulations. Go into the menu, go down to Film Simulation, and choose one of them. After you've made your choice there, the next line down from fil Film Simulation is the ability to warm up or cool down the image. You can actually preview the image as you're doing your adjustments, so you can get a feel for what you're looking for. You go into that menu and then choosing toggling up or down, you can see the resulting image would look like with either a little bit of a blue tone to it or a slightly warmer tone to it. There's also an option if you by chance did not make that choice before you captured the image. If you've captured the image using uh, a RAW file, you then can go into playback mode and using the in-camera raw, raw conversion, convert that to a monochrome image afterward and then apply the same warming or cooling tone options within that image. You make your choices within there as far as the different options, whether warming or cooling, and create a, a secondary JPEG image from the resulting image. The X-T3 also offers the ability for a, a, an adjustment in the color chrome or color chroming effect. And what that does, if you can be capturing images with a lot of um, nature shots, tend to have a lot of very vibrant colors. And they can cause issues when recording uh, them with your camera. There's an option within the X-T3 on the same page, on the IQ first page, of color chrome effect. And you can decide whether you want the, that effect to be weak or strong or turned off entirely. Again, if you have recorded that in a, in a RAW file, you can then make images corrections after and create subsequent JPEGs. Where this is useful for, as I mentioned, is if you've got really strong colors and will help to, help to process the colors ever so slightly differently. Very useful if you're going to be shooting with um, shooting images of flowers or very vibrant colors within there. The X-T3 features Bluetooth with Wi-Fi connection. The Bluetooth enables for a very fast connection, but it uses Wi-Fi to do most of the legwork and transferring the images, etc. Fairly easy to set Bluetooth up. Let me show you how it's done. First, you need to, on your device, you need to have a Fujifilm camera remote downloaded and installed. From there, you would choose pairing registration. While we're doing that, let's go on to the camera. And on the camera, I go into settings to connection setting and then to Bluetooth. I need to start a pairing and registration. Hit pairing registration on my phone, at which point there's a little bit of communication and then you confirm that it's that device that your camera that's rather that you're wanting to connect to. There's some initial, also further communication that happens up to set things up. The phone comes up and says, is it okay to talk to that camera? You say, okay. On my camera, it says, do you want to use the date and time from your smartphone? I always like to turn that on and say, yes. If ever I'm traveling, now my camera will automatically have the correct time based on the time from my smartphone from whatever network connections are on there. Let's take a look and down a little deeper at the various menus within the Bluetooth menu on the X-T3. It has now a choice of uh, selecting the appropriate pairing connection. And I can actually have up to seven different wireless devices connected to my X-T3. Here's where I choose from the various devices. If I want to, if ever I by chance lose a device or want to remove a device from the list that it connects up to, I can delete a pairing registration here. You do need to delete the corresponding pairing registration on your smartphone. Next down is Bluetooth on or off. Fairly self-explanatory, and normally you'd want to keep that on. Reason being, it offers Bluetooth as a fairly low power, so it doesn't draw a lot of battery power from either your phone or from the camera itself. Auto image transfer. What that does is it allows me to automatically transfer images from the camera to my device immediately after I've taken the pictures. If I wanted to, I could make it where I'm just transferring the images one at a time afterward. Smartphone sync setting is at the bottom of the menu. And here's where you can choose whether you want to have it where it's connecting and pairing with your smartphone about every five minutes or so to talk uh, and share the location data as well as the time, or just the location, just the time, or turn it off completely. I like to leave it on as location and time. At that point when I'm traveling, A, I've got the right time set in my camera. As well, now every five minutes or so, the camera will pull my device, confirm the location. Now all of my images are automatically geotagged with the location. So when I'm traveling, I know what fountain or church or waterfall that I'm taking a picture of and where it was located. Makes it a lot easier when I get back from vacation. 
Once I've got that connected and I've got the Bluetooth running between my camera and my phone, you'll notice that on the screen, the Bluetooth symbol is actually quite bright. If it's waiting for connection, then it will go to a slightly darker or dimmer view. When I've got it paired up, I have very quick remote release capabilities from my smartphone. Now, every time I push the button on my smartphone, it uses Bluetooth to connect up and capture images of what through my camera. I can back out of here. Now, because it's connected up to my smartphone automatically, when I go actually into either playback or I power the camera off, it's going to transfer any remaining images because I've got auto transfer set on over onto my smartphone. So the first time around, you do have to go into settings and you have to set your wireless network to the camera. But after that, it will automatically reconnect up to the smartphone, to the camera directly each time out. Once I've made my selection in settings, I can go back to my camera remote. There's some communication that's happening between the camera and the device, and the images are transferred over automatically one at a time over to my smartphone. It is a three megapixel file by default. That's usually enough that you're wanting for mobile transfer. If you want, you can make it the full 26 megapixels, but that will fill up your device a lot faster. As the images are being transferred over to my phone, I can't use the internet because it's actually using the Wi-Fi connection within there. Now that the images are transferred over, I will find those images here on my, in my camera roll in my smartphone. They've already been transferred over automatically. This makes it real easy for me to be able to share those images very quickly and easily with my friends, family, and on various social network sites that are available. The X-T3 has two card slots. They're SD, SDHC, and SDXC compatible. They also take the UHS-2 cards, which are the very fast cards. This is very useful if you're going to be shooting a lot of burst sequences, or if you want to be able to shoot RAW plus JPEG and have the buffer not be filled up, or if you're going to be recording video, you really need to have those faster cards. Once there are the two cards loaded in there, there's a few choices when it comes to the memory management. If you go into the settings menu, you can then choose in save data setup whether you have the images are saved sequentially. At that point, the images, both the RAW and the JPEG, are stored to one card first and then to the second card after that first card fills up. You can then determine whether you want to have that main card slot being card one or card two. Then if you want, you can actually choose backup and you can have it where both the raw file and the JPEG file are stored to card one and then a redundant copy is stored to card two. This is very useful in case your card ever comes, becomes corrupted midway through a shoot. You've still got a fully functioning card that you can record your subsequent images to. A lot of people like to shoot raw and JPEG and have raw go to one uh, card and the JPEGs go to a second card. This is useful. At that point, you can have the raw files that you can take back to your uh, computer afterward and work within them. Or, and then you also have the JPEG files that you can potentially hand to the client or work with those images right away and to to post those up on social media, etc. So let me choose raw plus JPEG for this one and take a picture. When I do that, now if I've got the raw files on one card and the JPEGs on another, and I want to delete them, I have to remember to delete that same file on both card one as well as card two. There's an option for that in case you don't want to have to remember all that. And when you're in the playback mode, you can actually choose further down the menu, you have simultaneous delete. At that point, it deletes both the raw file and the JPEG file from the two separate cards at the same time. I have that turned on. Now I just go to erase and I can actually choose which frame I want to erase push the button once, and now both that RAW file on one card and the JPEG file on another card are successfully deleted. And those are just some of the features that are found inside your Fujifilm X-T3. Hope you enjoyed. If you should have any questions or comments about this video, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below, and we do respond to all relevant questions and comments. Feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you'll be notified whenever videos like this are made available. You can also find us on Twitter, at FujiGuys, Look for us on Facebook and on Instagram. And until next time, I'm Gord with the Fuji Guys. Thanks for watching.